as you can see teeth have quite an impact on one's face so excuse my hairstyle all right so today we're going to be discussing bruxism so it's about grinding or clenching your teeth um and what effects it can have on your teeth and the symptoms you're going to feel and things you can do to help you so some people's teeth have got a shape like that so you can only uh, clench like i can only clench some people's teeth are more like that so they, uh, they grind okay both of those are not good because they eventually start to deteriorate the teeth and it's quite expensive to replace your teeth as you know um it's uh I know of some people who have literally ground their teeth down they've had to have actually porcelain porcelain veneers made um, because they've their teeth are finished so it's a lot cheaper to rather go if you think you're grinding and clenching to when you see your dentist ask them to make a plate for you which you can then wear either on the top or the bottom especially at night uh, it is difficult to get um, used to in the beginning but it's so worth it because it's going to cost uh, save you a lot of money in the long run um, the, I use the bottom one, which I find a little bit easier. But as I said, you've got to look at it as in from now into the future, that it's going to help you look after your teeth and not have to go to the dentist more than you actually need to. So why do we do this? Why does pe do people clench and grind? Um, there are a couple of factors you know sometimes you just have that you're very stressed and you're grinding and clenching because you're just trying to cope and it's a subconscious thing and um or unfortunately some people chew chewing gum which is also really bad because uh these muscles in the head have to overwork and the muscles here have to overwork so eventually they get these trigger points and then they, you just have this biomechanical mess here muscle spasm here and everything so it's just stop stop chewing chewing gum um another reason why you can have this is uh often most a lot of people have had to have their wisdoms removed now appreciate that the wisdoms are at the back of your mouth so to try and get to them they often have to pull this jaw pretty much you know like open and down to get to the back there and then when they sort of slide it back in again, the little disc at the top here doesn't always pop in where it used to. So then you can sort of have this malalignment that occurs. You won't feel it straight away after surgery, but you'll feel it a couple of years later where you'll hear, you know, the one jaw might be clicking or the one side's really sore and your ear hurts or you're starting to get these chronic headaches. These are all common signs of this this phenomena of all these different things occurring around the jaw joint and the ears and the neck and everything a lot more common than um, they give them credit for so um otherwise you could also maybe had a, a clap on the side of your jaw and so that trauma has also like displaced the muscles and the ligaments and in your jaw area people who've also had whiplash so, you know, when the whiplash comes, if it comes from behind, you kind of like first do that and then you go forward and versus the front, you first do that and then you go back. So whiplash is about uh, the muscles in the back that are strained and these ones in the front. I find that most people always treat the back, but these muscles are also very important. So your sternocleidomastoid runs from your mastoid process right up down to the clavicle. Now, when you have trigger points in this muscle, the pain can go up into your sinuses. So if you feel like you've got blocked sinuses, it can make your eye watery and like droopy and sore. Uh, it can also make you sometimes feel a bit uh, dizzy, right? So if you move your, you take your head and you lean back like that, if you feel like, oh, I can't handle it because it's making me dizzy or I don't feel great or I feel nauseous. A lot of times it's this muscle over here and the muscles that are even deeper lying next to the neck. So another thing also what happens is with the jaw being not so happy, the little muscles that are inside the ear also tend to get very tight and aggravated. So a lot of times all the, you know, you even find your little, the little tympan tympanic membrane, which is what, you know, the what vibrates when sound comes in, all those little muscles are tight. And people often find that they can't hear properly or they start landing up with a tinnitus, which is like a ringing or a, like pulsing in the ear 
um, a lot of the times it's just because of the tightness within that uh, jaw joint you know complex and the upper spine over here so muscles like these this muscle here the temporalis and then you have the masseter and then you've got deep lateral and medial pterygoids are all involved with chewing um, and opening and closing the mouth the jaw all right so when these guys have trigger points you literally like you feel like your whole head's in a vice so what i like to do is for the treatment for this is we work in all the little muscles around here and the jaw then i have to go inside the mouth and work on those little lateral and medial pterygoids and just get the patient to open and close and move the jaw around it's very painful but i don't kill them i just make it so that the muscle can feel a little bit more relaxed okay sometimes i even needle into that which you only do if somebody knows what the hell they're doing okay then the muscles on the temporalis muscles, we, we work the trigger points, we work the suboccipital muscles, we work basically the whole head, just making sure all those muscles are relaxed. Then luckily, because I'm trained to do it, I get to adjust the upper neck a little bit. Well, not a little bit, I adjust it. And then between the shoulder blades, just to get the joints nice and relaxed. Then of course, we work all the muscles in the, in the traps here. Then I start off with these muscles, um, as I said, the sternocleidomastoid, which often, even if you haven't had a whiplash event, um, from this chronic sitting forward like we do uh, all the time, causes these little guys to become shorter. So when you want to go backwards, you can't, and it makes you feel funny and yucky. All right. So uh, you'll also find that once you've had a bit of treatment around the entire head, you'll even find that your eyes don't feel so heavy and you don't, you actually can see better. Um, same thing if you just you just massage here like under the sinuses here and you just push out all these points there you pinch these um, eyebrows all right and you find the little trigger points and the little pressure points here and as I said here and here and you just move all the way along there all the way to the ear the back of the jaw you can also massage like that find the sore spots and push on them okay and uh, that will also eventually, like I say, make you feel better. Even if you just take your ears and you just sort of, I know it looks weird, but you can just grab your earlobes and you can just tug like that and a little bit back. Um, when you do that, you're going to feel one side is going to feel tighter. And that's generally also the side that the joint is actually more jammed up. Okay. So it's a very important joint and complex and things so a lot of times as i said people don't understand that's the grinding and the clenching that's causing all these other symptoms um so yeah that was just a kind of an introduction to um maybe making you understand better what's going on and things that you can do to help yourself to not have this become a chronic condition which causes a lot of distress and depression you know so I hope this helped. If you like it, the content, you're welcome to share. If you want to register, subscribe, please do that. And I will see you shortly with some other fascinating and interesting topics. Have a goodie. Goodbye.